There is a dog missing. His name is Rare. He is yellow with black in color. His metal fur. There is a reward for a thousand doge. If you can find him, call now. 1-900-1997-900. I mean 1-866-924. Big shout out to the Kurt Hustle Collective. And to Rare, who is missing. Welcome back, everyone. Artist Journal, February 21st, 2023, broadcasting from Berlin, Germany. My name is Adrian Pocabelli, and welcome back. Welcome back. So, yeah, this can happen. This has happened. As Rare was telling me, he was in the middle, as he messaged me, he was in the middle of writing about his new all-time high in sales. Like, he made a sale that sounds like it was a new all-time high. Maybe we should try and find that, actually. Uh, His account was deleted and taken away from him, and so he's had to start another one. I'll show you uh, the account. I think it's called Where's Rare. We'll look in a second. So if you're wondering why, you know, your favorite, you know, Boston Dynamics dog artist is kind of quiet right now, and you now have your answer. So he is missing, but there is a reward, and a thousand doge is available. And talk about turning a defeat into victory here with this brilliant uh, you know, response. Another testament to the imagination of this scene. It's like to me, like if you're running an ad agency of the world class caliber and something like that were to happen, and then this is your response, I go, great work. Great work. Here's all your money. This is fabulous. This is, we couldn't have done it imagined a better, you know, this is world-class response, in my opinion, and it's just someone with their imagination having fun. So isn't that awesome? So big shout out to Rare. Let's get the details. And look, I mean, again, that great, you know, statement by that general who I should look up here, defeat into victory. In other words, turn defeat into victory. A very crucial, you know, uh, saying Uh, which, you know, I've mentioned on this program before, in which I have, you know, when you get hit with a defeat, which we all do, uh, it is a, you know, how can I turn this into a victory? It is a wonderful way to think. It is a very optimistic way of thinking. So anyways, let's look at this work here. Where's Rare? Uh, Look at this. I mean, he makes five ETH out of the deal. So a little $10,000, you know, or maybe, you know, $8,000, $8,500, you know, uh, sale here on these 50, uh, this limited edition here is not a bad way to, you know, to deal with this. So it's a, a, put it this way, it's a nice consolation prize as things get worked out here. What happens when you lose your four-legged buddy? You send out flyers, let's hope Rare gets back to home. Brilliant and beautiful. So five ETH. And I also th- th- saw this 0.1 ETH is actually quite brilliant because, you know, just like Walmart pricing, uh, when you see it's like 97 cents instead of 99. Uh, when I saw 0.1, I was like, oh, I want to buy one right away because I was thinking 0.01. And then I saw, oh, it's sold out. But then I was like, oh, it's 0.1. <laughs> you know, OK, that's not, you know. That's not $18, that's uh, $180. So anyway, 0.1 is an interesting price point from my perspective. So let's continue on here. So this is the new account, Where's Rare? And Rare is a you know stand-up, very nice guy, showed up on the Twitter spaces about a month ago, which was totally awesome. I'm actually, I keep saying this, I'm gonna upload those to Spotify. I've already uploaded a couple. I need to do a search and make sure they're there though. Um, so anyway, so life is good. Well, life is life is continuing with Rare. So he's only got 259 followers. He probably had five or 10,000 before. So hopefully that gets reinstated. Um, but in the meantime, you can also follow him at Where's Rare. And who knows, maybe this becomes his main account and everything. And as he says here, NFTs can't work without community. Thanks, friends, for being there for me while I'm, de- while I'm dealing with issues with Twitter. So... Again, it just all goes to show diversification, 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 whether it's multi-chain, multimedia, or multi-platform. 
Okay, so, you know, as I said to him, you probably should start an Instagram account if you don't have one. And again, turning defeat into victory, I think those Boston Dynamics dogs on Instagram would be a massive hit. I mean, so again, defeat into victory, as that interesting general said. Uh, continuing on here, uh, okay, so we have, let me just fix the sizing here. Maybe we'll do this. Actually, let's just do this. This looks great. Uh, so we're going to do uh, Twitter Spaces, of course, our regular one on Wednesdays. So this time, the topic is, where are we with AI art? It's Again, as I was mentioning yesterday, it's been about a year since we started discussing AI art. and Or sorry, since we started seeing mainstream tools. And again, feel free to disagree. And we have a work from 2015 by Sabato using Google's Deep Dream you know, neural network or whatever. So... And I was even experimenting with it, and I don't really consider myself a hardcore AI artist at all uh, way back then. Um, but we'll look at that in a second. But all to say, there is a Twitter Spaces Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in New York and 3.30 in Berlin. Join Rune Tune and myself and hopefully... Uh, Lily Illo and Anna Dart and Roger House. I say hopefully because, I mean, it's Twitter, so we never know, but they all sound like they're going to come. And so Lily Illo is in the middle of the night in Australia. She said it's 3 a.m., but she is going to try and do it. So super cool. And anybody else, I was thinking I should message Fake Smile, who is like a, you know, AI art programmer or whatever they are, you know, developer of sorts. So... Uh, I will try and remember. So, Fake, if you're watching this, come on down and be the next, you know, person on stage and give us your thoughts because I'm sure they're fascinating as someone who's been dealing with this for years. So, anyways, come check that out. Uh, I'm going to pin this right now onto my profile. So, that is where you can find it. Uh, continuing on, a couple of comments, uh, just a, kind of a minor comment, but important. The KHC report, so this work here, that we we're looking at yesterday is a reference to the classic hip hop album *The War Report* by Capone, Noriega, uh, Capone, sorry, Capone and Noriega. Excellent show as always. Keep it up. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, okay. So little detail there on the KHC report. This is something I that's kind of been sneaking up on us, if you ask me. Uh, earlier this morning, even, I mean, Tezos was at a dollar twenty nine, and that might not that's not much when we look at the big picture, which is that's not very good. If you zoom out, you know the year, it's pretty terrible. But if we look at the last couple of months, I mean, we were down at seventy cents. So just from a artist perspective, frankly, from a collector perspective as well, this is a different story here. At a dollar twenty-four or a dollar thirty, I mean, if this keeps going, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a different story. All of a sudden, your eight Tezos is tur turns into ten bucks rather than you know seven or six. So, just a you know interesting you know to note that it was kind of sneaking up on us a little bit there. Uh, another interesting uh, development here. So, object one. I don't think we've discussed this. This tweet's been around for a while, or you know, variations on this tweet. Uh, so we are excited to re reveal that Object One will make its debut with an exceptional lineup as part of its very first drop curated by Object.com and Fake Whale XYZ. Welcome to the new era of rare Tezos art, March 1st, 2023. So I, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how exactly this is going to work. It kind of looks like super rare and here are the artists. It kind of looks like super rare for object, doesn't it? I wonder, I think it's going to be trickier though, because it's almost like to use an analogy, OpenSea, it's like OpenSea becoming the regular platform where people buy art on Tezos, including one of ones, and then all of a sudden, and then super rare shows up and says, hey, you should use super rare. So you wonder if it's going to work. So anyways, it'll be interesting just to watch and see. And it'll be interesting to see how the curation takes place and how they present it. Will other people, you know, will the community be able to curate or is it going to be kind of like a tight curation, sort of similar to Super Rare, which has its benefits and its drawbacks, right? 
So here it is, and if you don't know about it, here are all the artists, and you know artists like Neurocolor, who we, who is pretty pretty awesome there, and Coldy, and Ezra Eslin, and others. So, anyways, check that out, Lorna Mills. To shout out to Lorna Mills. So, anyways, that's March first, twenty twenty three. So let's see how that goes. It's going to be super interesting to watch. We've been talking about object doing curation for a while now. This looks like a variation on that. Let's see what happens. And this is something also just, uh, I just thought this was an interesting thought while we're on the topic of one of ones that came out from Brendan North. Editions uh, are great, but there is simply no thrill in life like a one of one art auction. Yeah, I kind of find them stressful, to be honest, uh, the ones that I've participated in because, yeah, I, I mean, they're great if they're, uh, put it this way, they're great as spectator sport. Um, but yeah, the last thing you want to be doing is like in a bidding war where you're like, I have to have this piece, but oh my God, how much is this going to cost me? Um, it is a thrill. I mean, there's no doubt about it. There is no doubt about it. There is a thrill. There is nothing like a bidding war on one of one art. It's thrilling, you know? And so I, I have to agree. I mean, I wouldn't say there's no thrill in life like it. Maybe that's more than I would say, but I would say it's thrilling, Sure. So let's, that's interesting, right? And on the whole curated art front, front Pablo Pancaso, uh, this is their, they tweeted out their gallery. And so look at all these crypto punks, by the way. I mean, this is, these are worth like, I mean, are these like a million bucks each now? Like, I don't even know, but that's pretty insane. Uh, and you got all these doodles. And then you see some of Grant Yoon, you know. So anyways, I just thought it was kind of interesting. Gallery.so slash Pablo Pancaso. And so you can just sort of see uh, how they're doing it. And I think they mentioned that they were, and remember this artist, right? Uh, so that's the thing, when you start collecting, uh, and then it's sort of like, uh, what do they call it? The law of attraction. The law of attraction, that's a Brian Tracy thing, uh, which actually got ripped off and turned into a movie called The Secret. If you want to know, that's actually a Brian Tracy idea, by the way. Uh, so, uh, but what happens with, according to these, you know, again, we're back to the success philosophers who I love, actually. I think they're very beneficial, especially if you're having problems in your life, which we all do at certain points. But this idea that the more, let's say you're collecting money, the more money you collect, the more it kind of grows. You know, it kind of, there's a, it's kind of like a law of attraction. It's almost just a psychological thing, really. And this kind of happens, the reason I mention it is because it kind of happens with collecting. The more you collect, the more you kind of see how great this collection is. And the more you want to collect and just kind of make it even better. It's kind of a law of attraction type idea at work here or principle at work. So anyways, look at this and we recognize this artist. And anyway, it's a pretty extensive gallery, as you can see here. Is that X copy? God, these, this collection must be worth so much money. That's pretty wild. Or maybe it's someone else. I'm not sure. Or it's Xerox, maybe. I'm not sure who that is. 0009. And anyway, you can go through it yourself. But hey, there's Uxine. And some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work by Uxine. This is still one of my all-time favorites here, I have to say. This one was like just stunning examination of an ordinary 21st century portrait and this one is quite stunning too uh you know this one like it took me a while to sort of just really i i love them all frankly i love them all anyways so you can check that out just kind of interesting and a gm from dana ulama that i thought that i hadn't seen before so i thought why not share it here and wish us all a gm with this kind of i think sh she calls it cyberpunk and uh, really cool. Uh, just kind of a short little clip here. Again, almost looks, reminds me of Berlin. Let's put it that way, the S-Band there. And anyway, and she lived in Berlin for a while. So she was saying maybe some of this stuff comes out psychologically at one point, subconsciously. And I love that. The color, everything, just beautiful, you know, quote unquote cyberpunk. So this artist, Grafica.png, who I just think is super cool, would easily fit into the, you know, what's cool about Grafica.png, in my opinion, is this is an artist, uh, if you can render this work 
in a nice way physically that would just fit right in with a contemporary art scene. Kind of what I would be tempted to call a crossover artist of sorts. You know, like if you saw this in a gallery, you wouldn't kind of, you know, bat an eyelash. You wouldn't think twice. You'd say, of course, this belongs here. And, you know, this is an NFT. Oh, oh, really? It's NFT art? I didn't realize that. You know, that kind of thing. So kind of really interesting, provocative work. And I, I think... Graphica had mentioned when I first posted on gra about Graphica's work that it was a combination of AI, collage, and digital painting. So one of these, you know, what's tempting to, tempting to call hybrids, hybrids of digital, you know, digital art hybrids, uh, hybrid of techniques, a hybrid of techniques. So cool work. Uh, sold for 0.25 ETH, by the way. And here's some of the other work on the foundation on their foundation. Digital Eden sold for 0.35. I mean, and we saw this work the other day, 0.3 ETH. I mean, this is like what? Uh, what is 0.3 ETH? You know, we're at $1,700 ETH. So what's 0.3, maybe 800 bucks or six, 700 bucks? Maybe 600 bucks, <laughs> maybe $575. Anyway, I think this is a really interesting artist. And so I just am really interested and thrilled to keep showing their work. Uh, Bullen 132, another hybrid artist who uses digital collage and digital painting and is pretty, like this is a one of one for 15. I should pick this up. Man on a chair. Uh, again, like it's pretty interesting and cool. Like again, when people put out, I, I think Bolin is putting out maybe one a day or pretty regularly. I mean, something's going to happen there. You know, some is... You know, it's they, in military terms, they call it muscle memory. You do a exercise so many times that you don't even think about it when you actually get on the battlefield when all of a sudden bullets are flying by you. Muscle memory. And, you know, if you're struggling as an artist, it's my kind of recommendation is just sit down or whatever you do, stand up if you're at a in your studio, but just put yourself in art making mode and don't even worry about what you're making. Just do it. And then you know, over time, you're going to get bored and you're actually going to start doing stuff to entertain yourself. But you got to get yourself in the studio, so to speak, quote unquote studio. Anyways, doing it regularly like this, uh, we see the results, which I think are quite beautiful here, uh, which seems to be kind of a philos philosophical work. I might have to pick this up. 15, I mean, 15 Tezos isn't as cheap as it used to be, though. <laughs> but we've been spoiled here with for as from the collector point of view on... You know, like, again, who's complaining? You're spending 20 bucks on a one-of-one one art piece like that. Sounds like a pretty good deal, doesn't it? Now, speaking of beautiful work, look at Santiago here. And this looks like a maybe the prompt, sight not to sleep and not to be awake, thinking of that time we put some candles inside a box and the light was sent to the middle of the year 2600. It's feeling cool over here. That's all I know. And look at this experimentation here. Hopefully this opens. Yeah, look at this. Hopefully this doesn't crash my microphone. These beautiful, massive works. This is a beautiful, like this pixelation. And you know what it reminds me of? This here, and we were talking about sampling across layers here a lot. Uh, this here looks like, you know, what I call retro screen uh, pixelation here. Like maybe this is like an Atari one, which sometimes has that more kind of horizontal pixel feel. Whereas some of these other pixels look more like what we might consider traditional uh, pixels. So it's almost like sampling across different uh, screen types, like retro screen types is almost how this feels. This could be an entire like series or body of work as far as I'm concerned. You can make like just on this, what seems to be going on here. So I think just a super interesting work and it is sold out. I was like, oh, how do I get it? 300 Tezos, which is pretty good. A one of one sold the next day, sold 12 hours later. So for a cool, you know, $375, maybe $390, not bad, not bad, Santiago. And here's another cool one by Santiago, <coughs> text to image tools, <clears throat> out painting and GIMP. So I also like this. Because to me, this is another way of saying, and correct me if I'm wrong out there, Santiago, if you're watching this, this is another way of saying AI, isn't it? Text to image tools, isn't that what this is? 
Uh, so interesting, you know, as I think of our AI discussion on Wednesday, I think this is really a, in, like maybe it's not artificial intelligence and all this is is text to image tools. I just like the description there. I think it's very interesting. Um, and so here is the work, you know, and a pretty interesting work. Forbidden Art Party with Me and You. Kind of a romantic title, isn't it? And I love the title, actually. Forbidden Art Party with Me and You. That sounds like an incredibly romantic night with Santiago there. So very cool work. And I believe, did I make this bigger? I didn't. Let me take a huge risk here with my day. For the sake, in the service of art, here we go. And look at this. So this text to image tools, look at how beautiful this is. This is a, like, it's a fairly epic work, isn't it? Like, I again, like, uh, we're spoiled over here for art, aren't we? Like, again, like, there's, I haven't seen really anything quite like this. And it's like, kind of a hangout, kind of a salon style, you know, the salon styles where you just put everything together. Uh, really beautiful and beautiful textures. There's a fire in the middle, you know, like very interesting work, okay? And again, what did that go? So that was an edition of 20, probably sold out. Yeah, sold for a mere five Tezos. So pulls in a hundred Tezos there on a beautiful work, fantastic title. Uh, Shaving with the Myth. So I missed this yesterday. Uh, this is Rustic Digital Art and the Myth on a collaboration. So that is pretty interesting. And so almost back to these other works by Rustic Digital Art, where I started with Rustic Digital Art with these kind of, I don't even know what to call them, uh, exteriors, uh, for lack of a better term, but just these kind of figurative works. And so here, uh, the myth chimes in here through what seems to be a mirror but you know two fairly surreal artists here uh here's a and here's the myth with the cropped mario and so all sorts of stuff going on here almost a grant yun reference here which is probably rustic just playing around with irrationality again and here are the cropped marios and there is the myth and the myth so all sorts of stuff interesting dynamics going on here shaving with the myth Kind of mysterious title. Uh, buy it for 50 and let's just see what it sold for. 20 on uh, primary and there were 15, so 150 Tezos each, pretty good. Uh, a different work from Audi and let's just look here. Living in reality, it's about simulation. We are simulated in this digital world and that is fun living in reality here. So kind of looks like Audi is on vacation here and having a good time with some friends. So I'm glad to see that. And just an interesting painting here. Edition of 10 for only three Tezos here. And there are eight left. Audi Woody is a pretty good painter. Like, so yeah, so that's interesting. So we might have to come back there later today. Board Me Social Club with another interesting kind of surreal painting. Impossible W and Robert Smith, I assume from The Cure, uh, brought Le Pain, Le Pain, again, interesting, AI and procreate drawing. So do you see what's going on here? Oftentimes, not always, there's no rule, but oftentimes I'll put the AI at the back, but you're starting to see it bleed in to the front, into other, almost all domains. And you start to see these, again, we're back to this hybrid, uh, you know, art here. A lot of exporting, a lot of using different tools, and I'm a huge fan of that. AI and Procreate Drawing, so interesting evolution here, or development from Board Me Social Club. Buy for Five, edition of 15. And just interesting painting. Again, just kind of mysterious things going on here, as usual, with a bit of a just David Lynch sort of quality to it, isn't there? Dexter, and this is a new one. I'm not sure on the reference. Jason is back if that's a Halloween reference or to some maybe it's a personal reference on his part. Anyways, kind of a nice kind of classic Dexter work with something on fire in the middle of a field and kind of again an interesting painting. Kind of a, it's ambiguous. Did this person start the fire? Is this person stopping because they see a fire? What is on fire? This interesting sunset. 
uh, you know, the fence, beautiful detail here with the fence and just the treatment of the road and everything. And again, playing again with that great contrast of one thing moving uh, with a static, you know, surrounded by staticness, which just creates kind of something interesting, a nice contrast. Jason is back with Riotic, with Riotic. So not sure what that means. I'm sure somebody else there do, out, out there does. Another reference, I don't know. Um, Computer Diptych by RJ. So I'll show you the original in a second. A reworking of Francis Bacon's 1964 double portrait of Lucian Freud and Frank Auerbach. So we continue to learn about new paintings courtesy of RJ. I picked this up. There's still uh, several left on object. It is a small edition of 10. And so one of these, another great computer painting. Let me show you the original. Look at this. I mean, uh, yeah, six left. So again, there, there are still tons of deals to be found on Tezos, if you ask me. So here's the original. So this was, because you, you start, the first thing I wondered when I saw this was computer diptych. I, I, see one, I see one painting here, not two. But if you go to the original, and you have to love that splash here, the black marks here, that's a nice touch. That's why people pay millions and millions of dollars, among other reasons, for Francis Bacon. That is really nice splashing there. And what an interesting composition. And then just puts, so it's a diptych because this piece of wood here divides the painting. And you wonder if this is actually one painting uh, or if it's two that have been put together. I have another view on it here. Look at that. That's totally awesome. And just what a, original composition. So RJ pays homage with the computers. And so very cool. It's interesting how we didn't put in the screensavers here. Maybe it was just kind of a sketch that he's like, okay, I'll put this out on Tezos and just something fun. Uh, so anyways, very cool, very interesting. And here's another work by RJ, by the way. So perhaps a preview onto what's coming. Kind of looks like a landscape. GM, work in progress, 8.34 this morning. So this just came out. So maybe RJ is working on a new series. So that sounds fun. So really interesting work from Ed Marola here. And let me just speed up a bit here. Isn't this cool? Kind of looks like a, for lack of a better term, like a abominable, not an abominable snowman, but a Bigfoot type character here with awesome fur and beautifully dithered face here. So all the mysteriousness makes a beautiful composition though, doesn't it? It's a sort of work that you walk into the museum, you can have it really nice and big and it would be awesome. Uh, so anyways, just in the entrance and everything. So Edmarola, Red Monkey, beautiful. Uh, Galena, let's just actually see what that sold for before we run too quick here. It was a one of one sold for 55. That is a nice piece, in my humble opinion, not financial advice, of course. You have to be ready to sit on this forever when you buy art. But for 55, that is a pretty nice piece. Uh, Ed Marola, again, edition of 10 for 10 Tezos, Galena Shed. So again, some pretty hardcore experimentation if we look at this strange ring here and the stretched out trail, the strange tree, everything here. There is nothing like it. And even it, it's very, you know, bold in its decision making here. And that has to be appreciated. And it's consistent in its, in its experimentation here. So again, the more you see it, the more you are some, you know, persuaded to go down that experimental path that we have here with Ed that leads to this, you know, ancient vase, another kind of reoccurring uh, image icon in Ed's work. Galena Shed, brush set taken from Naked Galena's The Dance of a Female Praying Mantis After She Bites Off Her Partner's Head. Inferno Door, another experimental work. I mean, and this is like the full, you know, size, I think. Let me take another massive risk here and make this bigger. So this is up close and I, I'm enjoying looking at works up close because this is important here. So this is kind of 100% here. And you can see it's almost like JPEGged out, JPEG artifacts that are being, you know, that you can see on this pixelation, on this dithering, you know, which creates that kind of slightly blurry look. I mean, so really edgy 
experimentation here. And again, there's the vase again, though, with some consistency at the same time. And you see this strange bird figure, you know, reaching out for the vase. And this kind of almost has a gothic feel to it with this strange frame. Always interesting. Tom Bombadil, and there is, is his signature at the bottom there, Skyward. I quite like this piece. Uh, I have to really credit Tom Bombadil's uh, imagination or resource. You know, like it's very resourceful work because he's always coming up with a different setting uh, for his Sandman type character here, a guy with the, you know, gas mask. Very cool. And here a guy is repairing this plane while it's snowing. You know, so very cool, very fun, and you gotta love the dithering here. That kind of four to the floor dithering that is almost his trademark here. Skyward, a buy for seven, edition of 22, sold out. What was, let's just look at primary here. Sold for five on primary. Maybe reducing the prices a little bit because of Tezos, because I think he was at six or seven. I could be wrong. I think, I thought he was at six for his editions. So that is interesting. Uh, another one by Stalomir, and I think Stalomir actually sent this, which was super cool. Big shout out. Thank you. And a, another really cool work in the Homeworld Memories series, Cylindrical Passenger Vehicle. And so here we see it with this just kind of weird, it's almost like a sci-fi, you know, comic or novel of sorts that's being told here visually, you know, in this strange Homeworld series. I think it's super cool. And of course, we remember from, you know, these spectacular works here, which almost evoke, you know, those wheat fields, almost evoke those, you know, what do they call them when there's the UFOs that make the patterns in the wheat fields? It's escaping me right now, but there's kind of something alien, as you can see here, about the whole thing. Uh, so, again, it just has a cool sci-fi feeling to it, kind of part Star, part Star Trek, Part something else, you know, pixel sci-fi pixel artist, Stalomir. Very cool. And who has work on Ethereum that we've also looked at. This was a piece I missed the other day from P1, and this was one of the more poetic Tezquake Aid works. So a pixel art work by P1, and basically, you know, reconstructing a heart with the, you know, Tezos Quake Aid logo there. And I think this is just a, another you know, world-class uh, response. Like, again, if I'm in an ad agency here and I say, hey, can you guys put together a work for Tez Quake Aid? We need it to resonate with the public. We need it to be, a, you know, we need something here. And then this is what I get. I go, okay, this is good. This is great. You know, Pixel Art by P1, special piece for Tez Quake Aid. Buy now for two Tezos. How many are left? There's 83 left, so there are a ton left and help support these guys who I'm sure still need the money and probably the money is not flowing like it was before in the last couple of weeks. So nice time to pick that up. Kit Velo. I thought this was interesting. First drop into the Squant series, Utopian Espresso Low Power High Yield Matter Merger. And you know what this reminds me of and maybe it reminds you of the same thing is when they have those video game kind of templates or sheets where they have all the image from a 1980s video games in one sheet. And then what the programmer will do is call up, okay, we want block seven dash three, and then we want block, you know, and that's how the video game is kind of programmed. It kind of reminds me of that. And uh, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about here. Let me quickly taking all sorts, Ultima four graphics, Ultima fours, let me see if this works. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. Nice. Uh, you see this? Ultima 4 is one of my favorite video games of all time. It looks like one of these things, okay? Uh, where basically all the elements of a video game from like the 1980s is in one kind of cheat sheet where the program references them. That's what this reminds me of, but where it's repeated here across. I don't know if that's what's going on. So 8-Bit Kit is the artist. Glitch, Corruption, and Pixels. And it might not actually be, uh, you know, how they're working. It probably isn't based on this other work. But anyways, that's what it reminds me of. Here's another work by 8-Bit Kit. I don't think we've looked at their work yet. Sanctity of Time. And this came out a couple of weeks ago. Aggressive Displacement of Metaspatialization Policies. 
So, you know, playing with what looks like kind of retro computer graphics and glitching them out, you see almost what looks like an A from a word processor of some kind from way back when. So Sanctity of Time may be referencing that retro tech. And this is interesting. So LB has put out a series of works on what looks like a new platform, Glitch Forge On Demand. So putting out a series of one of one works, quite beautiful, I have to say, LB. These are quite beautiful. And again, I start thinking, how do you make this into print? You know, and then you squint your eyes. Okay, let's say you don't need that internal texture. <clears throat> or you know what you do? Maybe you do. You print out the the white part where you get these textures. Let's just say for the sake of argument, maybe you don't do this, but let's just say, and then you screen print, you just, yeah. And then you screen print the black on top, for example. There are many ways you could do this, but yeah, that's probably not the, the best way to do it, but that's just one way of like, that I start to think, huh, how could you turn that into a physical? Because it's quite beautiful, just from a, it's a nice abstract. Glitch Forge, so a hybrid generative glitch platform on Tezos. So isn't that cool? And I've seen uh, LB uh, post a few things from them. So here is the platform, by the way, auction ended. And I think this, yeah, this is the homepage. So you can explore and check that out. So again, a glitch platform on Tezos, and it looks like it's already somewhat integrated into object, but I don't think I'm not sure if you can buy on object because I see a bunch of one of ones here by LB. Maybe they're sold out or maybe you can't buy them on object. I'm not sure, but you can go to uh, Glitch Forge on Demand to learn, to learn more. <laughs> Call now. Uh, okay, Yagiz Ilmaz had a very nice work. This is an open edition, a page from the booklet that I filled as part of the Artist Diaries exhibition held in Eskize here in the past year. So this is a lino, lino print. So maybe this is physical, actually. And uh, yeah, so you see a hand. I just thought it was a nice work. Uh, interesting piece, open edition. Only two have been minted. So maybe I'll mint one here for a piece of Belina or a edition of Belina. And here are some of uh, Yagi's Yilmaz's other works. So we see a tooth and some illustrations here. So very cool and just kind of experimentation, a lot of one of ones. And we have nine pages of work. So let me just give Yagi's a follow. Filling thoughts, lines, and dots. So nice lino cut. What is that called? A lino print. I mean, nice print. So I assume that's physical and this must be a scan. I like how it's treated too, where the scan is incorporated into the work, kind of making it digital right? When you start incorporating all this stuff and not trying to fix it, right? And then putting it out. Anyways, interesting. This was a beautiful work. I just picked this up actually from Daniel W. I thought this was super interesting. Uh, still human, highly textured 3000, 3000 PNGs using only black and white. And so the, the nervous system, CPU, RAM, you know, BIOS, Northbridge, Southbridge, network cables. So you see here, it's almost like circuitry, but you almost don't even notice that at first. At first you do kind of think, oh, that's just the nervous system. But the closer you look, you go, oh, that is circuitry. And here is the nervous system. Really, really interesting, cool take on basically the human body. Nice, simple metaphor here. Technology, circuitry is the nervous system and beautifully, but it's the execution. You know, it's not like nobody's ever thought of that before. The execution is outstanding, though, in my opinion. It's beautiful work. A new work from Flora Marquez, Fan de Fiesta, End of the Party. And also a skeleton here, so I thought it might go well. And interesting, moving outside the lines a little bit as we continue to follow Flora's work. And a snake continuing with the colors. And the leaves here have no outline, which maybe is also a development, not sure. So starting to break out of the lines here as we continue to evolve here with this sketchbook. Interesting see-through party hat here too. So we're starting to see little kind of deviations, evolutions, developments here. Uh, we'll see if they stay. Lorna Mills, Swiss dancer. I thought we looked at this, but I looked at the date and it looked like it was minted really recently. Uh, but a bubble, 
like basically, you know, someone blowing bubbles, those massive bubbles that you see in tourist areas, again, done with this beautiful pixelated treatment. This was minted yesterday. So by Lorna Mills, animated GIF, 10 frames per second, Swiss dancer. And this was transferred to Olaf Breunin. And continuing on, more works by X Mortal. Shout out to X Mortal. Uh, so anyways, cool glitch work here. So it continues. On this looks like more just abstract hardware video synths and glitch gear, pure nine. And here's a personal computer, so more representational here. And this it looks like it's sold out. Buy for 18, probably on secondary. And let's just quickly look at what is five Tezos on primary. Pretty cool work, if you ask me. Look how great that looks. Basically a retro computer in rotation here. How are we doing? Okay, I'm going to speed up a bit. And then a little bit of real glitch at the end there, as far as I understand. Here's another interesting piece. Sabato, I think, retweeted this. Netlinker Pando. And this is interesting because there are two versions. I actually, like, this version is the one, if I was to buy, I'd be like, oh, I want this version with Lasergate and Netlinker and this beautiful blue background. But anyways, again, a kind of retro computer sci-fi computer that's been uh, in rotation. But then you click on the link and this is what you get, which is one of these, what do they call them? GLTF or GITF? I think it's GLTF, which is probably the format. So I didn't even know you could put this kind of 3D format on object. How cool is that? So this is available for 660, an edition of 15 by Agnes Evergrace. So cool work. And here's GLTF, I brought it up, is a standard file format for three-dimensional scenes and models, okay? And it uses both a GLTF and GLB files, okay? So that is what that is. So that is news to me. And someone sent this to me, Discutable, Discutable, sent me a 303, so that is hilarious. And it's also a GLTF file. And so that is super cool. I kind of want to press the buttons there. Soon, one day these are going to be workable, you know. Uh, TB303 synthesizer, GLB analog bass gear, super duper cool. Thank you for sending that for 3.03 .03 Tezos, appropriately. So this is by Sabato. Sabato posted this. Uh, I am unveiling some new AI artwork for the upcoming MAIF Deepfake exhibition. This is not that. This is, in the meantime, here's the Once Was a Path a photo processed with Google's Deep Dream neural network that I made back in 2015. So a lot of us who, who actually did fool, like I fooled around with AI, but it was so like, I found the, the rendering so like, it always had this kind of feel to it of this kind of rainbow swirling thing that I felt like, okay, we're not there yet with AI uh, work, but this is actually quite a beautiful work. It's a pretty interesting work, like, uh, you know, and I wonder in terms of minting, what should be done? Like maybe this is already minted, but I'm actually guessing it isn't. And I kind of think works like this should be minted. And I think you make one of ones, but I don't know. I'm just sort of thinking out loud here. Some beautiful works by Sky Goodman, many of which I missed actually in the last few couple of weeks here. Modern Icarus for the city of life's, for the city life highs, pixel sorted AI kicks. So. Icarus, of course, is the guy who, and who was his, I should have looked this up, Daedalus, I believe, was his dad, who was kind of the wizard kind of figure, or the guy that built crazy machines, and he built wings, usually for flying, uh, with the arms, and so Daedalus was flying across the sky, but Daedalus said, Icarus was flying across the sky, but Daedalus said, don't fly too close to the sun, and of course he does, and this is a famous Greek myth. So, Modern Icarus for the City of Life. So kind of a Icarus reference here. Almost a Hermes reference here or Mercury. Beautiful color. Sky. Great great work, Sky. And look at this gorgeousness that I think I missed. Golden Hour. 800 Tezos. Edition of 20. So this must be on secondary. Let's just see what it... For, so 51 Tezos sold out. Really cool collaboration here. This is gorgeous. So another impossible sneaker here, or is this lost sneaker? Exclusive collabs. So just a collaboration here. 3D VR sculpting, analog glitch, After Effects, Photoshop. So again, very, very cool. Collaborating with Strano. Cool work, both of you and all everybody involved. 
Special edition Valentine's Day mids. AI kicks Pixel Sorted. Sky Goodman edition of nine. So another really nice, uh, this is a pair of these lost kicks. So again, just very interesting and good looking. I love this, uh, what's going on here too. Again, we're kind of back to this digital texture as I take these massive risks with my mic here. This is like, you know, it again, it gives you that kind of, that looseness. It's like the equivalent of that bacon that we we're just looking at with the black paint splashing across. I like this stuff a lot, like this kind of noise, you know, and even this texture that you see in the background, great stuff. Continuing on, and finally, uh, this is, I actually, I don't think it's a physical work. This is by Tony Wallstrom, who does physical work. Haiku in C major. This is on Super Rare, just minted, 0.69 ETH reserve. I'm gonna bring it up close here. And I think this is AI. Because if you look at this, this looks like AI, doesn't it? So there may be painting involved here. Like I was on the Twitter profile and it sounds like he does real world paintings as well. Maybe we'll just quickly go on the page here. See if that loads up. I'm a painter almost every Friday. I think we've looked at actually Tony's work before. So anyways, I think that's a newer one, a short poem or a major chord. So a recent work. Let's just look at the date there because I thought that was... Okay, I think that page is gone, but either way, interesting work, if you ask me. And that is your show, ladies and gentlemen. Again, give Rare a follow, Where's Rare on Twitter, and big shout out to Rare and everybody else. I hope I see you on Twitter Spaces tomorrow. Come learn or chime in on your feelings of where we are with AI art right now. Till next time, take care.